Hello there, beautiful people. I hope that you guys are doing well. Today, we're going to talk about something which was requested by a viewer a little while back. I got an email from somebody saying, I would love it if you discussed your experience being legally gender X. So today, we're gonna talk about that. So I've mentioned a couple times on this channel, but I am one of very few people in the world, one of a, a, an extremely small demographic of individuals who is legally Gender X. So there's an external world that cares a lot about the M and the F. Now for me personally, um, unless I am navigating the medical system, that doesn't really concern you. It's not really any of your business um, to know my medical history. Um, whether I um, was assigned an M or an F or neither at birth um, is the business of my doctor and my doctor definitely needs to know the ins and outs of my complex, um, not entirely binary sex makeup. Um, and that's very relevant for my doctor. Um, it is not relevant to anybody else, to, to literally a single other person. Michel Foucault originated the concept of biopower. To quote Wikipedia, don't judge me. I'm a philosophy student, but you know, sometimes getting the original quotes from the original text is just hard, okay? Biopower studies populations regarding, for example, number of births, life expectancy, public health, housing, migration, crime, which social groups are overrepresented in deviations from the norm regarding health, crime, etc., and tries to adjust, control, or eliminate these norm deviations. I really like Foucault's concept of biopower. To me, it is essentially a critique of census, a critique of the way that the state um, captures data on its citizens and then often uses that data for not so positive purposes. Now, I'm not going all tinfoil hat on you. I'm not saying that the state collecting data on M's and F's is like inherently evil or that the state is gonna like someday decide to genocide all M's or genocide all F's. Um, but what I am saying is that the state in my personal political opinion does not have any right um, to define me as an M or an F. Now I had a hard time finding up-to-date information on which countries allow you to legally identify um, outside of the M and F sex binary, um, but in 2021, uh, the countries were Argentina, Austria, Australia, Canada, Colombia, Denmark, Germany, Iceland, Ireland, Malta, the Netherlands, New Zealand, Pakistan, India, and Nepal. Since then, the United States has also joined that list. So the Biden administration announced that it would allow gender X passports to be a thing, and gender X passports became an option for United States citizens in, I believe, January of this year. Um, I applied for my gender X passport almost immediately after it became an option to do so. I had been following this news for a while and I had been really excited about the possibility of having a gender X passport. So when it became an option, I applied for one almost immediately. The process for applying for a gender X passport in the United States was incredibly simple. Um, I think in some ways it was actually easier than a lot of other bureaucratic processes in the United States. I didn't need to provide any sort of documentation that my gender identity had changed or that I had been living, you know, as the opposite sex for X amount of years or that I was undergoing a specific medical HRT regimen. I didn't have to provide any information to the state apart from I would like a gender X passport. Um, so it really was a very simple process and it kind of reinforced this idea to me that this is a very like political decision in many ways. Like you are essentially just changing out your documentation. It doesn't necessarily mean that you are changing gender. It doesn't have to carry any implications in regards to your sex. It is simply a change of document. That's really all it is. And for me personally, a lot of my decision to get one was wrapped up in the politics of doing that. So, I got my Gender X passport in the mail. I was really very excited to have it. Um, and I remember making this post about it and being like, I'm legally Gender X now, I was really excited. I think for so much of my life, the documentation that has grounded me in this like socio-political category um, has been extremely frustrating for me. Um, I feel like I've spent a lot of my life trying to climb out of the boxes that society has put me in. Um, 
And this felt like a legal step in that direction. Like what I've been fighting socially my entire life of being put into, you're this thing, you're that thing, this box, that box. That's something that's also been, um, you know, reinforced by the state. So to take this back from the state and, and also in a way socially to be able to say to my community, but also to the state, no, I don't want to be in these boxes anymore, um, was extremely empowering for me. I think having this passport as anybody who is gender non-conforming or potentially intersex is very um, useful as well. There are a lot of situations as you navigate the world where um, you aren't perceived as an M or an F. And so to be able to back that up legally, to be able to pull out your passport, pull out your driver's license, um, etc., and to be able to be like, yeah, look, I am, <laughs> um, you know, gender X, um, that can actually be a beneficial scenario. There are so many assumptions that surround sex categories. When you show someone a driver license or a passport and it has an M or an F, whoever is looking at those identifications is going to carry assumptions about you. They're going to carry assumptions about what genitals you have, about your medical history, etc., etc. When you are gender non-conforming or non-binary or intersex, and you don't fit into society's assumptions of what an M and an F is supposed to look like, it can feel sometimes unsafe, it can be literally physically unsafe, um, it can be psychologically uncomfortable. Um, to be able to have someone look at your identification and say, oh, okay, you're this thing, therefore I know this about you and that about you, that can be dangerous for you, um, it can be uncomfortable for you. To be able to navigate the world and to be able to be like, ha, you don't own my medical history. Like, you don't get to look through my documentation and see an M or an F or to assume, you know, specific things about me. And I think for people that are gender non-conforming, that can be extremely empowering um, and also actively benefit our lives. Okay, I've talked about the positives of having gender X identification. Now I have to talk about the negatives. I really want to encourage people to pursue gender X identification because it lines up with my politics and because the more there are of us who are gender X, the more this becomes normalized in society and the more state systems are forced to cope with our existence and forced to make accommodations for us. However, in the world we live in today, having a gender X passport has made my life very difficult and I am sorry to say, and I really don't want to say this, but I actually kind of regret getting a gender X passport. And I think being open about the fact that I somewhat regret it, and it is a somewhat regret. It's not a full regret. It's just a partial regret. But I don't think that takes away from everything I've said so far in this video. I stand by every single thing that I've said about my gender X identification journey and the political power of it and the personal power of it. That all holds true. However, unfortunately, I am an immigrant. And as somebody who is very disempowered when it comes to the state, um, it's been difficult to contribute to my own disempowerment in the state and to essentially oppress myself within the bureaucratic systems of the United Kingdom. So the United Kingdom only legally recognizes M and F as legal sexes. So essentially I'm stuck in this limbo where my sex category is legally recognized by the United States, but it is not legally recognized by the country that I actually live in. And this has made my life very difficult. I was recently undergoing the process of visa renewal to stay in the United Kingdom and my guy who was like looking through all my documentation was looking at my passport and, and beforehand he was like, all right, so filling out all the information and then he gets to gender and he's like, why isn't this, why doesn't this, doesn't this say female? And I was like, oh yeah, so I have an American gender X passport and he's like, can I just put female down? And I was like, um, you can, but I don't know if that would be legal because legally I'm not female. And he was like, well, I'm just gonna put female down. And I was like, okay, like you're the immigration man, like you know what's best. Um, and he goes through and then he realizes after a while, he's like, oh yeah, you know what? I don't think I can legally do this. And I was like, yeah, I don't think you can either, sir. Like I'm not legally a female. So 
Um, <laughs> and so he's like, I'm just going to put unspecified, which is the UK's equivalent of like a third sex category. The challenge here is that if you are perceived as a binary gender, whether you are um, cisgender, whether you are transgender, if you are perceived as a man or a woman and you show your passport to somebody, you are essentially outing yourself, at least politically, as neither. And most people are not going to read your decision to have a gender X passport as political. Most people are going to assume that you are trans, they might assume that you are non-binary, they might assume that you are intersex, but at the end of the day, they are going to make assumptions about you. So for somebody who is trans and who is passing, when you show someone identification with a gender X on it, you may be potentially outing yourself, you may be potentially putting yourself in a dangerous situation. It would have been much easier for me to have an F on my passport and to not have to navigate all of this, these difficult scenarios, legally speaking. Um, so having a gender X passport has made my life as an immigrant so much worse. Um, that said, um, the home office is letting me stay, which is cool. I was worried they were gonna just like deport me for not being the right sex category. The home office approved my visa application, which was very nice of them. However, they are refusing to issue me a biometrics residence permit, which is a form of identification that I need to prove that I am allowed to be in the UK. So I'm currently in immigration limbo where I have legal right to remain in the UK and I have a paper which shows me from the home office, they've said, you're legally allowed to be here, but they are not willing to issue me with a biometrics residence permit, which means that I have no official UK identification to say, hi, yes, I'm allowed to be here, I'm allowed to work, you know, etc., etc. I will say in terms of like my navigating the world at large with a gender X passport, I have currently only traveled in Europe with a gender X passport, but I have not had any difficulties with it, even traveling in countries that do not have um, third sex recognition, um, I've never had any difficulties showing a border guard my passport. Um, I've never had any challenges getting into a nightclub or anywhere else that checks my identification. I've really never had any really significant problems interfacing with the world as a gender X pa person myself. So broadly speaking, I really have had only minimally negative experiences having a gender X passport, but the experiences I have had that are negative mostly just in relation to my immigration has been so negative and so difficult that it has made me wish that I had just put a little just put a little cheeky F on the passport and just be done with it. Obviously if you're going to get gender X identification and you live in a country that does not recognize gender X then you're going to make your life difficult and that is of course what has happened for me. So that is my gender X experience. If you have any questions for me about having a gender X passport or how to navigate that process, feel free to put those in the comments down below. If you found this video interesting and informative and helpful, feel free to give it a little, a little cheeky thumbs up. And if you're interested in conversations surrounding sex and gender and politics, feel free to give this channel a subscribe. A huge thank you as well to my Patreons who made this video and who make all my videos possible. They're really cool and really lovely and they help make my life as a trans immigrant in the United Kingdom a little bit easier. So thank you guys um, and if anybody wants to support there's a link down below to do that. All right, I'll stop with the shameless plugs. It really feels like old school YouTube. I don't usually do those as often anymore. Um, but to the person who requested this video as well, I hope that, I hope that it answered your questions and that you enjoyed it. Um, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye-bye!